Well, Dr. Bill, not only is this our uh, Christmas special show for 2012, I'm sorry, Pagan Christmas special show, Pagan Christmas, we might as well call it Festivus like uh, Frank Costanza on Seinfeld, but not only is this the, our official Pagan Christmas show, and uh, it happens to be Saturday, December 22nd, 2012. And today is a very special day. Bigger yeah. than, bigger, much bigger than Pagan Christmas. Because we're here. Well, besides the fact that we're here and the end of the Mayan calendar... Uh, a bunch of was, bullshit. Was yet, no, the, the Mayans did not say it was the end of... Of life and the, and the world, it was the it was the end. It was the end. You see that calendar up? Let me wall? finish. Uh, yeah, I know. I see it. All right. When yeah. does it end? It ends December thirty first, two thousand twelve. That's exactly. the last day of December. Correct. Last That's day of twenty twelve. That's what the Mayans did. It's an the end. calendar ended that whatever year they depicted it to end, and that's it. It's an end of an old old world of an old age and the beginning of a new but what I'm what I'm trying to say is today is much more important than the end of the Mayan calendar or or uh, happy or merry whatever you want to call it merry pagan Christmas 2012 very it's much it's much bigger than that oh, to, to, today so much bigger and to, besides uh, 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 was yesterday the beginning of the winter solstice the I think it was the 21 what was that yesterday yeah the first day of 21. winter one yeah. but the today has day of the year but today happens to be the first day the very first day of the age of Aquarius. Oh, the age, boy. the age of Pisces left. The all the you know uh, the the turmoil that came with the age of Pisces left, and today is the beginning of the age of Aquarius, just like the song from 1969 by the Fifth Dimension. It's exactly what the song means. Today is that very first day, so okay. I will celebrate with my New Year's Eve party favor. Oh. Oh of the dawning of the age of Aquarius. Oh All right, and and have a merry pagan Christmas. Authentic old-fashioned jingle balls, jingle bells. For all you fools out there that are all tapped out and in deeper debt, because. You just feel so damn guilty if you if you're not a sucker for retail. Somebody posted a very fascinating uh, picture of a, of a, a demented, wicked-looking Santa Claus, mm. telling people, you know, you, you better you better buy all your Christmas presents. Better watch out. You better not cry. Otherwise, you're gonna feel guilty that you're not taking care good care of your loved ones. Some nonsense like that. It's a it, it's 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 propaganda, you know. And, uh, you know, Bill, Dr. Bill, this is the first time my boys are actually all facing... Facing the camera. They're learning, they're, they're learning to face the they're camera. They're all facing straight uh -huh. into the camera just about. Uh -huh. All of them. Uh -huh. These are the end time brothers with the demonic influence in the middle over, of course, right wing uh, conservatives, Republican Party and their demonic influences. Mr. Republican himself as a demon, okay, the devil's economics, that's this boy in the, me in the middle with the big hands, and these skeletons is what the poor and low income people have in store for them in the great tribulation. Of course, we are living in the end times. So, um, louder last week. Is that Johnny Depp? Captain Jack Sparrow? Yes. Yeah, I told you it was oh did you shut it off? No, it shuts off it by died. itself. That's oh. Captain Jack Sparrow. It's Johnny Johnny Depp's head. <laughs>
So, hold on. It's very, very windy and cold outside ah! uh, here in northeastern New Jersey. We are welcome to Progressive Discussions. I am your host, James P. Madonna, and I am here with my co-host and mentor, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. And uh, let me uh, formally pipe him aboard our progressive pirate ship the proper way with my authentic uh, bosun's whistle that I got back in the 1980s in Newport, Rhode Island. From a bosun? From a bosun. Welcome aboard the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman, our progressive pirate ship. How are you feeling today, sir? Cold, but okay. Cold, but here. okay. Breathing. Uh, merry, merry, a happy Festivus. For the rest unless, of us. For the rest of us, unless you want to call it Merry Pagan Christmas, but I call it Happy Festivus. And uh, the first day, the dawning of the age of Aquarius. All right. That's now what's going to be different in the age of Aquarius from the age of Pisces? What do, I look, what do I look like, a damn astrologer? Well, look it up. Whiz, I ain't going to look it up because astrology is a bunch of... No, it's not. Hoodies. It's the oldest science. Oldest science known to man. Don't mock the mystics. Don't. We just had a Mayan falsity mock. here, and no. now we're going to have another falsity. It's, man, you're gonna fall it's for it. modern man who misinterpreted the Mayan calendar's meaning. Don't blame the minds. Well, the astrologers... Just listen to the lyrics of the song by the fifth dimension. That, that'll that tell you. It don't tell you nothing about yes, the Yes, it does. Listen to it. When the moon is in the seventh yeah, yeah, house, yeah, 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 and Jupiter, or as the oh, Spanish say, Jupiter. Yeah, they say Jupiter. 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 And Jupiter aligns with Mars. Mars. The planet alignment. So what? The planet alignment, the age of Aquarius. Don't mock. But what is going to happen? The age of Aquarius. What is the difference? They're all For staring us. at you now. I may hope they make you feel guilty. I don't have any guilt. I don't know. I'm not an astrologer, man. I just. Well, I'm just, what do you bring it? Because I'm reporting it because it's very big. It's, we're supposed to have a whole new world and universe. Life as we know it is going to change. Fine, I don't know, Google it. What can I say? Okay, now. Bing it. Yeah, Bing is uh, Microsoft. How do, How do you know? Because oh, you like Microsoft. Because Google has been taking money to put you first. That's why. It's taking money to put James P. Madonna first? Oh, that's nice. I'm talking about big business. Number one. Oh. When you search for something, the big businesses so it, who have paid not, them. It has nothing to do with the fact that you happen to be a fan of Microsoft. It has nothing to do with that. Well, Google and Microsoft are not, they're two different companies. No, they own it. Microsoft. Now? Bing. No, I'm talking about Bing. Bing. We're not talking about Bing. We're talking about Google. Oh. You mean Google, who owns YouTube, has been involved in a little chicanery. A little That's correct. So if you Google, you can get Scroogle. <laughs> it's cute. Right. If you Google, you can get scru scruggled. Yeah. Okay. That, that that reminds me of the old show I did about the uh, lucky Chinese bamboos. That that we are bamboozled because they're actually, it's actually Draxinia plants from Cameroon, Africa. It has nothing to do with China or Asia. See? <laughs> yeah. It, this is retail for you. What about the fish? This they're is selling fish that ain't the fish that they say it is. Oh, it's tilapia? It's, they call it St. Peter's fish? All kinds of fish. You think you're buying one kind of fish, and you're not. I saw it myself. I saw a hake, which is a cheap cod, like pollock, being sold as haddock for like $9 a pound. This is deregulation of American businesses. Retail is allowed to lie to you and cheat you. Corporations are allowed to lie to you and cheat you. Now, before I get uh, speaking of greed, corporate American greed, uh, a person had informed me they were upset that you know they thought Walmart was a company that believed in 
lowering their prices lower than anyone else guaranteed to, you know, accommodate everybody and, you know, have everybody shop there. That might be true, more or less. Uh, if you prove that somebody else has a lower price, they will match it. But this person needed eyeglass prescriptions renewed. They needed to get an eye exam. They went to Walmart, and Walmart refuses to take Medicaid. Mm. They want the HMO. They want the. I go really Walmart, but but the pharmacy took your Medicaid. They go yeah, and and the optometry department is under the pharmacy department umbrella whatever they were they are they do work for Walmart so just for the hell of it I stepped I stopped in when I was in the area and I went to the pharmacist I mean the um, optometrist and I said to him hey is it true that you don't take straight Medicaid and he said with a snicker or a fake grimace he says uh, yeah Medicaid doesn't pay us enough so uh, why not why not go with the insurance company, the HMO? He says, uh, Walmart is a corporation and we're here to make money. <laughs> uh, well, I says, you know what, sir? You hit the nail on the head when you said the word corporation. So he, he I, I gave him a funny look, I walked away and he was smiling at me from a distance. He knew what I meant. It's a corporation, of course they all, all they care about is making money especially Walmart who made their employees work on Thanksgiving Day yeah. you know so that you know I mean this is a representative of what the American health care system is all about okay they don't not caring about the Hippocratic Oath okay first do no harm and, and take care of everybody when they're sick in a way that's a form of health care corruption because when you go back on your Hippocratic oath, that's that's unethical, right? They allow the corporations to do right to the legislation. Yeah, but health care, a good education and decent health care are supposed to be rights, not privileges in a free democracy. Well, that's for a free democracy which yeah. is run by the people. The but people. we don't have a democracy. No. We have fascism, where the corporations are married to the government and control it as their little yeah. puppet. Like, like when the right-wingers, instead of showing compassion for the victims in uh, Newtown, Connecticut, the, the little children, the 20 children, right away they started bitching and moaning and crying about their guns are going to be taken away from them, their guns are going to be taken away from them, whining. Wow. None of that would have happened if all the teachers and all the kids were armed. Yeah, they want they want Dodge City. Exactly, but you saw what Wyatt Earp did. When you came into town, what did he do? Everybody had to check the guns. Check that gun, pal. You don't go into the saloon without checking that gun. Brother Wyatt Earp played hardball. Yeah. Tough. And, um, and just think about this for But a moment. the criminals will always get the guns through the black market. Yes, they what will. What difference does it make, gun control? They will still get it through the black yes, market. Yes, they will. But here's the thought. If we didn't have guns, people who wanted to kill people would have to use other methods, like maybe a bat or stone. Yeah, but the colonists would have never won independence from King George of England. But... Well, that has nothing to do with anything. They had their guns. Well, it's, there's nothing wrong with possessing shotguns and rifles for hunting, quote unquote, hunting purposes. But I'm talking about military assault weapons. And, yeah. But the black market is. will still find. I mean, they should be worried about the black market, not they worried. They should be worried about mentally ill people having access to guns. And that includes the mentally ill mother of that little slimy slippery sleazy eel yeah because you figure out what did she need him with the stupid what did she need helmet him? head haircut and the dumb look on his face his what do you mean dumb look he had a mentally ill look those eyes you can mm. see it in the eyes all the time i would have slowly tortured him but yeah. but the mother why since when does 
She was a school teacher? I think. Uh, no. What was she? I don't know what she but was. But she was heavily armed. She had three hand, two handguns and that assault semi-automatic. Oh, okay. But he had clips. High powered clips which held a hundred bulatsos. That probably was his mother's. That you could lay you could knock off uh, you know thirty or so in a second or two. So he knocked oh, how did she get that? Well she got the, the guns legally. But the clips. Legally. Alright, so she he knocked off his mother while she was in bed. Yeah, so he said, he he obviously said, good morning. Had he said, "Top of, of the morning, ma." Blah, 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 blah. And that was that. And the mother was obviously the bad example. The apple doesn't fall far from the tree, does there it? There was some sort of Oedipus problem there. Something was there. Yeah. Something deep was there, yeah. like uh, a mother getting a, a tad bit overly involved with her son. I don't know. I don't think we'll ever know, unfortunately. You're right. But. All right, but. Going back to your original Walmart thingy. Oh, those scumbags. The reason we have a lot of mentally ill, and geez, you can go all the way back to the 20s and 30s when Wilhelm Reich pointed yeah. out these things. Right. We don't put enough money into screening and finding, you know. Background checks? Well, that's with Back the gun. Checks. But I'm talking about uh, uh, learning who are nuts and who aren't. Well, uh, the Republicans uh, will not give the money to that. Yesterday, I saw a lot of people doing stupid, weird things, like parking their car a few feet from the curb and crooked. People were do. People were act, behaving, whether they park like mo mo like morons or drive they, they, they were so reckless and careless and like they didn't give a shit and you know people were really behaving very stupidly and of course people are rude this time of year was there a full moon a lot of traffic nah, it's, it's it's just the way this p pagan holiday is I mean mm. everybody was uh, I but people were doing really dumb things mm. but um, now the Republicans <coughs> they uh, I was talking to Dr. Bill about this Wednesday uh, uh, during our uh, our weekly uh, powwow business meeting that we have. <laughs> yeah, and the new newsletter is out, by the way. That's right. So go go to newslettercensor.com and click on the printable order form, and with your gift to support this work, get the brand new, hot off the pancake griddle newsletter censor to support this work. But uh, the Republicans said, "Oh, okay." Uh, we'll help the disaster victims, like, let's say, Hurricane Sandy, but we're going to have to cut other social programs mm. to pay for it. So what this means is right-wing conservative Republicans really do not want to help the poor at all. No. Because they... if you're cutting, if you're giving for a disaster and you're taking away from much-needed programs, how is that helping, it is helping little, the little guy? the rich. So that you don't have to tax them. And of course the media or Barack Obama did not say anything about this in public. I would be scolding them left and right about every stupid comment that the Republicans come out with. I wouldn't let them get away with anything. Well, um, they're out of town. They're on vacation. Oh yeah? Fiscal cliff is looming. The fiscal cliff. That's like a a, a, a cute made-up catchphrase, like like in other words, every time the Democrats are in charge, the Republicans are always coming up with these cute little catchphrases that are in vogue. It, 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 now it's the fiscal cliff. Later on, it'll be something else. The debt it, ceiling. Yeah, these are all excuses n for the rich not to pay any taxes. Correct. Like it, like it's like they're like spoiled little boys with their toy taken away from them. They have to take tantrums, and 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 uh, and then you know, the tear ducts over at John Boner's tear ducts are are, are are very healthy, obviously, because he's got plenty of crocodile tears, you know. And um, but I I rather deal with his his tears of a clown when everybody's around than to deal with looking at old turtle face Mitch McConnell. Uh -huh. But 
Now to the, uh, how do they say, piece of resistance? Uh oh. Let me put this down. This is my we... final comment. And it's a doozy. Uh oh. Uh -oh. <sighs> True TV. Um, conspiracy theory with. Take my glasses off. Conspiracy theory with Jesse Ventura. Let me, let me start from the beginning. No, that wasn't the beginning. That was just a burp from my tea. I'm sorry. Excuse me. Season three of Jesse Ventura's Conspiracy Theory uh, was supposed to start on Wednesday, uh, which it did. Uh, I, I believe it was originally a 9 p.m. time slot. I could be wrong, but uh, then, lo and behold, True TV moved it later to 10 p.m., and then a week after... Jesse's show was moved to a kind of late 11 p.m. time slot. And then all of a sudden, the, the following week, no Jesse Ventura conspiracy theory at all. I checked the stations. I checked the guide. Nowhere to be found. Then, lo and behold, without notifying the viewers, True TV suddenly shifted conspiracy theory to 11 p.m. on Monday night because generally I watch uh, WWE Monday Night Raw and then it ends at 11 so all of a sudden I'm flipping the stations and I see conspiracy theory a brand new episode mm -hmm. I'm, I'm like they didn't even bother to tell people that it was moved from Wednesday to Monday at 11 p.m. so they're constantly obviously they're constantly shuffling around uh, the show without telling the uh, True TV viewers that they're changing it, and ma and trying then of course, it. huh? Trying to kill it. Trying to sabotage it. Trying to kill it. And right now, um, Jesse Ventura conspiracy theory Facebook page is uh, posting has posted a petition uh, concerning which I could not sign. Yeah, I was I was unable to sign it. Correct. And not only that. How to do a Second Amendment. And not only that. Second, Second Amendment rights. When I went to uh, to watch the Death Ray. Yeah. There was a little note up there Four, when it came up. Forty-two minutes. And it said to tell Jesse and his television uh, site about things like what you're talking about that True TD TV is doing. Well, like I'm, like I've been doing for the past few weeks. Yeah, but they want you to tell that their site, what is happening. Jesse's site. Jesse's site in terms of the uh, Jesse's uh, YouTube channel. His channel. Because yeah. I've been, I've been posting the details on Jesse's <laughs> Facebook page, and people <coughs> do pay attention to Jesse's Facebook page because I get feedback. Mm. But. Um, you know, it's, it, it, they're, 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 when you shuffle around somebody's time slot. You're trying to kill it. Without, without telling the viewers, which means you don't want the viewers to watch the show. Correct. And, uh, you're trying to destroy it. You're trying to kill it. You're trying to sabotage it intentionally. And I'm, and I, I just posted on uh conspiracy theory Facebook page. I says, as long as the station has a uh, commercials, and therefore sponsors, they uh, they will not appreciate a show that's based on real hard-hitting truth and, and really deep investigations and things of this nature. Correct. They, they're, they are not going to like it because... Now you said there were three episodes thus far no, this year? No, there was, I think there were four... Because I don't know the other two. I missed. I have the Death Ray and the Brain Invaders. Those were the last two. Those were the la Those were the the two latest one. The uh, uh -huh. the microwave uh, microwave energy used to control one's mind. The Gwen Towers and drive them nuts. You know, and torture people. Yeah, that was that was the one. The last one I saw Monday night at 11 p.m. The death ray was on 11 p.m. Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Before that, yeah. which was a pretty 
freaking heavy duty one. Mm -hmm. It was based on Nikol Nikolai Tesla's invention mm -hmm. that was take, confiscated and, and made uh, into a weapon. And uh, and then there was another one about the reptilian, this reptilian race, uh, this uh, the alien race that resembles uh, humanoid and reptilian people that lived on on the ground, that people have spotted. Underground. Yeah. Underground. Yeah, they uh, underground. Uh, where the hell is this people living underground? You gotta, you gotta watch the episode. Well, I can't get to the, watch the episode if I don't know about well, it. Jesse did a lot of yelling during that Whoa. episode because he was yelling at the people that were eyewitnesses that were given their story that they were not consistent. Ah. And uh, I remember one of the witnesses that towards the end that had the real scoop on this subject at least I think it was the, it was this episode I could be wrong but um, he made the, the Jesse and his crew go all the way to Las Vegas to meet with him in a hotel room and then he decided um, he didn't want to he didn't want to help oh I think that was that was the um, the energy that no that wasn't the reptilian thing that was the uh, that might have been the the one on on the death ray. I, wait, the, what was the episode where where Jesse went to this person's uh, residence somewhere up in the northwest? He lived in the northwest, some somewhere American Northwest, or and then and then he had um, some kind of um, device that utilize energy to move something like any, either anti-gravity or antimatter device yeah that wasn't that, that was the death ray that was on that was the death ray episode yeah okay okay because that was that was the guy who really proved that this technology exists, exists. okay and then and that was the same show the window because he made him he made everybody travel to vegas and he didn't want to open up I wonder if that was the same episode. But anyway, nevertheless, his show's being sabotaged. It's one of the greatest, hardest-hitting shows ever invented. And um, and that's that. It, does it surprise me? Hell no. It doesn't shock me. It doesn't surprise me that it's happening. Because, you know, you have sponsors, which means corporations. You know, commercials on True TV. Uh... The word true TV, the word true and tr Hold on. The word true and true TV, I take that word very lightly. Well, it is only T-R-U, which means nothing. Because there's no E at the end. No T-H. Ah, uh, you... Truth. Truth. You, you know what this reminds me of? This reminds me of uh, advertisements in American... Retail when you have a. Well, we didn't say that. We. You didn't read that fine print. It's like a joke that somebody told me. They said in Columbia, South America, a company was advertising whole grain bread, and there was only one grain in the, in the loaf <laughs> of bread because it was whole grain, not whole grains. <laughs> Sing singular, whole grain there was bread. One whole grain in there, baby. <laughs> Hold on, that's funny. Count it. Every time we tell a joke, we, we jingle the balls. We jingle the balls. All right. Start with the readings for our Happy Festivus and Merry Pagan Christmas and the Dawn of the Age of Aquarius show. When the Reverend Kip Banks family pulls out its nativity scene each year. Which is not accurate, by the way, the nativity scene. The African features of the baby Jesus provide lessons on both the Bible and self-esteem. Baby Jesus was an Israelite. Israelites the and the Jew. apostles, a Jew. One tribe. What I'm saying the, is they were Semitic. They were from Israel. They weren't a blonde-haired, light-skinned, blue-eyed people like like the uh, all the statues like that angle of sex which is what the uh, the Vatican their image 
of the disciples, Mary and Jesus, are. They make them look like they're nor Northern European. Banks' eight-year-old son, Kip Jr. That's his real name. Has told his father. Kip. That the Christ child is both black and white. How does he know that? His father gently corrects him. Gently? Telling him that the gospel story of Mary and Joseph's flight into Egypt with their young son shows that Jesus couldn't have been white. If Jesus was white, then he'd have a very hard time hiding in Egypt. <laughs> he'd stick out like a sore thumb, said Banks, right. Minister of Public Policy for the Progressive National Baptist Convention in Washington. At this time of year, many Christians dispel the go-to image of a white baby Jesus by including a Christ child of other colors in nativity scenes and plays. Edward Bloom, co-author of the new book, The Color of Christ. Is it really important what shade Jesus' skin was? Is it really um, necessary because we already know what color his skin was. Yes. So what good is this book? And it's not important to me what what uh, genetics Jesus had, what appearance he had. It's well, not anyway, important. this guy said in his book, he said the popular image of a white Jesus yeah. dates to the 19th century America when evangelical Protestants latched onto a fraudulent medieval letter that described Jesus with long hair, parted in the middle, and transformed it into a believed truth. You're talking about the self-righteous bigoted. We're talking about all the pictures that you see hanging on the walls of Jesus. Being Nordic looking. Yeah, be, Long hair. Yeah. Parted down the middle. You mean the Hollywood Jesus? The Hollywood Jesus, yes. Who was that one who played him? Jeff, Jeffrey... Uh, uh, yeah, I know him. Jeffrey Hunter. Hunter, yeah. And yeah. then there was the other guy, the English actor, who was had dark hair and he was very skinny. Uh, what was he again? The, later on, way after Jeffrey Hunter. Yeah. Jesus of Nazareth, I think the movie was called. Uh, uh, James Farentino played uh, Peter. I believe. I've seen it, but I don't remember. Well, it was the image that people have in their brains of what Jesus looked like. It depicted his face as warm with some redness in his cheeks. American Protestants fell in love with him. Though none of the Gospels describe Jesus' hairstyle or eye or skin color. However, the Bible does say it is a shame unto a man to have long hair and a glory to a woman. Oh, really? So we can assume that Jesus did not have long hair. I guess they cut their hair with swords back then. They had razors. They were not as primitive as you see. Like the Romans, now a better question. the Romans were shaven, right? Did they shave their faces, the Romans? Well, I have no idea I don't know. they did. All I know is... They were kind of shaven. I would be very All nervous Caesars. shaving with a straight razor. But anyway, go ahead. Uh, Mass-produced images after the Civil War followed the widely accepted notion that Jesus was white. In time, others began to counter those depictions. In the early 1900s, the NAACP's magazine, The Crisis, carried portraits of a black Mary and Jesus. Now there is a church. I'm not sure exactly where it is. They have a black Madonna in the church. 
I've seen, I've been in a, in a church in Patterson, New Jersey, which had a f image of Jesus uh, that was that was black. However, you know, and, and and when I was in Venezuela, South America, all the statues of the Virgin Mary had brown skin and and, and dark shiny hair. However, so everybody thinks looks at God in their own image according to their race and culture. However, the black Madonna was burned. That's why she's black. They cleaned her once. So she was the color that she was originally, and the people did not like it, so they blackened her again. It looks like, it seems like humans are totally getting away from what they have made the God message in their own image, but they're but they're avoiding the message, correct? And, and they're looking too much concentrating on the person, on the message, which was what Simon Magus gave to the Roman Catholic Church. Preoccupation with the messenger and not on the message, correct? It's like some goofballs, numbskulls that that post stupid comments under our shows on the internet. And they're not even listening to the entire show and listening to the content of the show. Just posting dumb remarks based on what they notice, things okay. that they notice. Later, nativity plays in black churches would sometimes feature a black doll as the infant Jesus. But the issue is far from a black and white issue. For Francisco Pierre Pereira, who grew up in El Salvador, it was a moment of pride when his infant son played the newborn Jesus at the Christmas Eve service at Washington's Calvary Baptist Church last year. The father of the now one-year-old said he thinks Jesus was brown. When he himself was growing up, he thought Jesus was white. Like in the movies. What, I think Jesus is a chameleon? The old movies, he said. That's what I thought he was. And do any of these individuals know anything about the Bible? Obviously not. No, they just care about whether Mary and Jesus and uh, looks like them, looks like their culture or their race. Yeah. And they think that Jesus' birthday had something to do with the 25th of December, which it did not. Folks, go to, go to your um, browser, let's say it's Google or whatever you use. If you Apple people, it'll be Safari and type in um, The Christmas Lie, Mega Life 21, and uh, listen to it by um, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. I have, I have it posted on uh, Facebook in different areas, and uh, <clears throat> but you could find it in your browser. Uh, just do what I say, you know, uh, Mega Life 21, uh, The Christmas Lie, and listen to it, okay? Yeah, listen to it a couple of times. Maybe three times, four times, five times. Mm -hmm. So you get a handle on it. And uh, there will be a brand new playlist. On There'll the be a test. On the Mega Life 20, yeah. That'll be a test a afterwards. Test. And the Mega Life 21 uh, YouTube channel, there will be a brand new playlist because the first installment of How to Defeat a Conservative will be uh -huh. on the internet. Very, very well, actually, today it will be on. Not yet, but it will be on later. The first installment of How to Defeat a Conservative, narrated by the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. And what better day to start a brand new series, a brand new playlist of, of series of, of, of readings than on the dawning of the Age of Aquarius? Aquarius, Aquarius. Do, 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 do. There are a lot of complicated ways in which to describe the schemes 
being floated by President Obama and the Congressional Republicans to abandon the traditional <coughs> consumer price index on which cost of living increases for Social Security recipients are based. And how do they want to base it now? On a lower CPI. So, so they don't have to pay as much. So people living... They've done this already back in the Boston <laughs> Committee back in the 90s. So people so people living on a fixed income, their their the money that they will be living on will be even lower yet compared to the rising cost of living, and it will be worth less. So people living on a fixed income will be almost in the gutter. Well, God forbid. The only other you know avenue is to tax the rich. Bingo. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. Now, the CPI from the, the 90s, the how they calculated it, has never kept, that, kept up with original real inflation. So, people on Social Security and etc. already have been robbed over all these years. But that's what it's all about. Because otherwise, you have to have the rich paying their fair share, and God forbid, you'll have Mr. Norquist have a stroke. That sounds positive. If we do the stuff like that. <clears throat> I, I, I think the rich should just pay their taxes and shut the fuck up and stop whining and complaining. They're, they're filthy rich. Well, they're So what if they pay? Creators. So what? No, the, yeah, in China. Yeah, because in the last 12 years, we've had tax holidays for the rich, and look at all the jobs they provided. In China, or Bangladesh, I was going to say India, but... Singapore. Singapore, too. Singapore? Singapore is not really uh, uh, a destitute third world country. They're, they're pretty... Yeah, uh, but they... They're, uh, they're up there. They have become one of the, uh, you know... They work cheap at, in Singapore? Philippines, all over Philippines, there. Philippines, yeah. Oh. The, the office jobs went to the Philippines. All over. You know, or Philippines, that, 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 it's amazing. They, they know English from when they're little kids. They're taught English and they know it. And, and they're very professional at what they, you know, what they do, working in an office. All the customer service call centers now are, seem to be in the Philippines. Or still in India. Most, uh, most in the Philippines. I think they, they, the, the Philippine people told me that live in the Philippines now that they, they get like a dollar an hour mm. to, for a customer service job. In the United, and they should be thankful. In the United States, customer service people were getting eleven to like fourteen dollars an hour, and they were overpaid. Most, mostly like oh, twelve, thirteen, fourteen dollars an hour. Overpaid. Yeah. It's still less than the cost of living in the in the United States. Yeah, but it's still going to the to the poor and the middle class instead of going to the rich. So I guess the rich, despite the fact Man. that they're rich, are not rich enough, and they don't want the little guy to really, really survive. They I guess they want you to be desperate and destitute. They want what they had in what, the old days. What do they want, Doctor Bill? Uh, economic inequality. So they can. So that they can be rich all the time. And and and, and you will never be rich. And uh, you will die. Die or at a desperation work as a slave. 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 So if this since this is all the hard hitting truth about life in the United States today then uh, what about all these uh, these um, low income or, or middle class Yankee Doodle Dandy pull yourself up by the bootstrap people like like my friend Dan E. Mount, Milk and Honey, Milk and Honey Dan. The land of Milk and Honey. Come on, James. The United States. This is the land of opportunity. Stop crying and pull yourself up by the bootstraps. 
Get out there. There's, there's, there's work out there. There's jobs out hey, there. Go over to the, uh, what? We got another bank in Lodi, New Jersey. Yeah. So go to all them banks on, uh, let's say, Wednesday after the holidays. With, with a go to each bank and ask them for some venture capital so you can begin your big bootstrap business. Bootstrap. He says you got to be positive. You have to have oh, a positive. Oh, you can go in there positive. You can have a nice business me. plan. Hey. Uh, I got positive business plan. What if I, I walk in there with it with a frozen Cheshire cat smile and my eyes bugging out like this? Yeah. Look at me. I'm channeling positive energy. I positively feel that I could succeed at this new business. So I would like you, your bank, to please lend back me. Back me, baby. Back to me. back me, baby, and lend me. Eh. What do you think? Fifty grand? Thirty no, grand? No, no, no. Go for the biggie. Seventy-five grand. To get a new business, you need to have six months in the bank. You need, hey, come on, about two fifty, two hundred fifty thousand. I need two hundred fifty thousand dollars, but I'm pos I'm channeling positive energy, like all those, those, uh, 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 those, um, those gurus out there make and making money on people with their positive energy, uh, you know, uh, uh, lectures and seminars. You know, all those. Uh, those hipsters out there and their positive energy, you know, uh, uh, reciting their their man their mantras as they meditate. See, I walk in there like Dan told me, be positive. I, I positively know. need two hundred fifty thousand dollars to start and my I new business. I guarantee you. Are you going to give it to me? I can guarantee you. You know what's going to happen? What's going to happen? You know that old guy who walks around with a gun in the bank there, the the, the the guard. Yeah. He'll be escorting you out of the bank so damn fast. Like if if you I don't, your head spin. you mean if I don't have collateral? Yeah. If I don't have yeah. collateral, he's gonna offer collateral damage. <laughs> <laughs> so another, what you're trying to say is, if I walk in here channeling positive energy, you'll be walking out channeling I don't know what the hell. A boot in the ass. A maybe. boot in the ass. <laughs> so I don't know. There, these little, uh, these guys, <laughs> these people that don't have a pot to piss in that talk like a Republican. I haven't figured them out yet. <laughs> uh, anyway, in anyway. favor of the so-called chained, chained CPI scheme. But there is nothing complicated about the reality that changing the calculations has the potential to dramatically reduce the buying power of Americans who rely on this successful and stable federal program. So the word for what is being proposed is cut, as in President Obama and Congressional Republicans are proposing to cut Social Security. Here we go with bipartisanship again, compromising it, again. This is a cut affecting every single beneficiary, widows, orphans, people with disabilities, and many others. It is a cut which hurts those who are most vulnerable, the most, the oldest of the old, those disabled at the youngest ages, and the poorest of the poor. Perhaps fittingly, this will be done during the holiday season, uh. when the American people are distracted. Ah, interesting. They will cut Social Security, not openly, but by stealth. Stealth. That's what you've been saying right along. Correct. Slow stealth. In other words, de desensitizing the impact is soft and, and, and scenes, gentle. Behind the scenes. Behind, behind the back. Behind your back. Yeah. Through a cruel cut known colloquially as the chained CPI. Boy, they have, they have a clever pet name for everything. This is what Democrats and most Republicans said during the recently finished campaign that mm -hmm. they would never do. If Obama cuts the deal, yeah. he will, in the words of Credo, political director Becky Bond, be engaging in a massive betrayal huh. of his own campaign commitments. Selling out his voters, right? And of the voters who re-elected him barely a month ago. 
I guess my grandmother was right about the leopard not changing their spots. A politician is a politician is a politician, man. It starts off as a lawyer. And a corporatist is a corporatist is a corporatist. And whether they're Democrats or Republicans. The question is whether right. the president's backers will mm -hmm. back the betrayal. Yep. The only responsible response to say is no. Oh. The ARP has done just that, rejecting the chain CPI scheme as a dramatic benefit cut that would push thousands more into poverty and result in increased economic hardship for those trying desperately to keep up with rising prices. I think we need another. I think we need a pro, another protest of of people living on a fixed income. Ah, uh, my friend, you see what the brain invaders did to the protests at Occupy Wall Street. Well, the people at Occupy. Have you heard of it anymore? That's because those uh, protesters were, were reminding me a lot of uh, flower children or Grateful Dead groupies, you know, they were just, there's too much uh, peace, love, and, and drum beating. Or they, maybe they were targeted individuals well, by the brain invaders. That's why I, um, I really look up to the protesters in some other countries where they don't play games. They get things done. Yeah. They, uh, 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 <laughs> let's put it that way, they, they play hardball. You know, like... Chris Matthews, The Middle, the Middle East. MSNBC. The Greeks. Seven o'clock. Yeah. Weekdays. Yeah, they, they, there's, there's no, there's no flower child. There's, there's no the, peace and love. In this case, ARC yeah. speaks not just for seniors, but for the vast majority of voters. When you say ARP, the American Association... A-A-R-P, <coughs> retired people, yes. The American Association of Retired People. Excuse me. 60% of voters say it is unacceptable to change the way Social Security benefits are calculated so that benefits increase with inflation at a slower rate than they do now. Needless to say, those numbers put Congressional Democrats and progressive interest groups in a bind. They can look the other way as President Obama cuts a deal that cuts Social Security, or they can do what the American people expect them to do, raise their voices in loud objection, so loud that the President has no choice except to keep his campaign promises. For Congressional Democrats, the stakes are much higher than they are for Obama. The President is done with elections. The Democratic Party must compete in elections to come. And the fight that is now playing out will define whether they do so as defenders of Social Security or as the party that is always on the watch for ways to compromise. Yeah. With House Budget Committee Chairman Paul Ryan. A little too much compromising going on. I hate to say it with the, with the Obama administration. A little too much compromising going on. And other Republicans who salivate at the prospect of weakening and eventually privatizing Social Security. No one will be surprised then Senator Bernie Sanders, the Vermont Independent, who has been a stalwart defender of Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid. I want to keep that promise, Sanders says, of the President's commitment on the campaign trail and in the early stages of the fiscal cliff negotiations to keep Social Security off the table. I hope the president stays strong. Ohio Senator Charlotte Brown calls Obama's chained CPI proposal terrible. Illinois Representative Jan Schakowsky, an Obama campaign co-chair, says, I hope that offer will be reconsidered. A frustrated Schakowsky said, 
what every Democrat must say if the party is to retain its image as the defender of Social Security. Bid off the table! This should be off the table. Not, not, not any talk of changes to Social Security, except positive ones, to improve the system. They should have took national health care off the table way back when. <laughs> but, but this day, they don't take off the table? That's because the health care the, the uh, 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 law, which they continuously refer to as Obamacare, was actually written by the health insurance industry. S sold out even there. Sold out to the fat cats. Once they privatize Social Security, you might as well kiss all social programs goodbye. If you're poor, you might as well kiss your ass goodbye. Is that article, is that no, reading? All right, all right, all right, all right. I, I have to go to the bathroom. Whoa! Oh, it's that big? Yeah. Damn, I mean, uh, oh, they're probably, they're probably, you're probably going to read more quotes from more Congress people and senators. Maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe not. All right, all right, okay. But, but, I have no you, idea but you're, you're marking where you left off. I know where I left off. All right, right okay. I don't have a mind. It, it is time for the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman's gastronomic delight known as lunch, followed by his taking of supplements. Uh, I know that they are very clock conscious here. Uh, not, not me, but the, 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 the newsletter censored research center is very rigid when it comes to the clock. I'm Belly. like Las Vegas. I, I just do everything on an impulse when I feel like doing it. All right. And, uh, and uh, casinos love that. Casinos That's why love that. The That's right. That's right. Well, the winter solstice didn't waste any time because as soon as it came, first day of winter, the temperature dipped and the wind started howling and blasting pretty strong. Every, every, Every day now, in the wee hours of the morning, the trees have been bending and the wind has been howling. And it started around uh, the day that the planets lined up, the alignment of the planets. They said the crazy weather has been taking place all over the world. Not just here in the Northeast, but all over the world they've been having wacky weather. Matthew 24. But I take I take wacky weather over cataclysm uh -huh. and doomsday any day. That's coming too, but not the doomsday that people have envisioned. Right, you're talking about the great tribulation. Mm -hmm. And the day of the Lord. Well, that's the only hope for um, for politics on this planet for 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 uh, ecology. Um, for uh, our system of governments on the Politics. planet Earth is the second coming because they're just getting more and more corrupt and more greedy, and they're all selling out. And they and they and they they they're basically they're laughing in the face of their voters. They're they're showing contempt for their voters. Politics will not exist yeah. in the millennium and beyond. But, but isn't it amazing how they? You know what? I guess they show contempt for their voters and they show more and more contempt for their voters for the same reason why they they can outsource American jobs because they can and for the same reason the rich don't pay taxes because they can and they're all getting away with it because the people are not doing a damn thing about it I think Albert Einstein said something to the effect that um, uh, what's worse than people doing evil in the world is are, are the individuals that just sit back and let it all happen and don't do anything about it. Well, that's what happened. We allow the corporations and the rich to take over. Yeah. There is no democracy today. Our voices are not heard. Yeah. Well, plus you have many Americans like my two buddies that just want to party and feel good. You know, you you they, they you know like they're not interested in politics. You say the word politics and you mm. say the word economics, and they're like, they start snoozing on you. They you mm -hmm. know, they want to change the subject. 
But if you talk about, you know, uh, when you talk about economics, people's when, eyes glaze if you, over. If you say to them, uh, "Hey, man, you want you want some not some really nice, uh, some really nice flavored uh, kettle one uh, vodka on the rocks," or you want mm -hmm. some uh, absolute vodka on the rocks with a twist of lime, and they get all excited. Oh yeah, yeah, I'll take some. Oh, you got you got sh uh, Johnny Walker uh, red or whatever. You know, or, or you got a joint, or you got, um, you know, uh, then they're interested. You're gonna hook me up with some chicky poos. Then they get all excited. But as soon as you talk about how the country is going to hell in a handbasket, yep. they don't want to hear it. So they, 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 they're interested in hedonism, hedonistic yep. pursuits, but they don't care about what's happening to their country, and they're not getting involved, or their mm. planet. Because mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's profit before people and profit before the planet. You know, the devil's economics, which is represented very well by the two-party system. So hopefully what I hear is true that come 2016, the independents are going to unite unless they wimp out. There's no hope there. There's plenty of independents on. There was plenty of independents on the ballot this past November, but nobody knew who they were. And nobody will know who they were are in 2016. Because they lack a, a spine to, to be heard, or because the the no, U.S. media the will not allow it. The, they will never get invited to the debates, mm -hmm. and, and and the media will not give them face time. Mm -hmm. The mainstream media will not give independents candidates, whether they be libertarian, whether they be progressive, liberal, socialist, whatever they be, they will not get face time by the U.S. And media. And, and now I heard the BBC was sold out to the fat cats, too. Gee, that was a shocker. And the answer is not to add more politics. The answer is to do away with politics completely. Because money, for some reason, money and politics are always uh, better. As the say. nail sticks to the stone. As the nail sticks between two stones, so does sin stick to buying and selling. Correct. So that means God ain't too crazy about capitalism. So, conservatives, they're, they're much farther away, much farther away from the God of the Bible than, uh, than progressives, than Democrats are. So who are the, uh, if we're the Democrats, then what are they? The hypocrites. Oh yeah, they're hypocrites, they're phonies. Well... The evil. They use God as a front man. That's right. They use God as a front man, just like a, a crooked TV evangelist uses God as a front man. Mm -hmm. to, to fool people. Mm -hmm. Suckers. Usually, a sucker is somebody that's too lazy to do their research and learn. Learn the truth. Wow, that wind. You hear that wind howling out there? Mm -hmm. The age of Aquarius uh, sure is uh, cold and windy. It's, this is great weather for homemade hellfire chili in my pressure cooker. I got, I got the ground beef. I have the tomato. I have the, uh, the freshly grown hot peppers from this past year in my freezer. I have the cumin. I have chili the powder. Cor coriander. Chili powder. I don't need chili powder with my peppers. Oh no. Ooh. Don't eat it. The only Ooh. thing I don't have is uh you hear that? Wow. The only thing I don't have is kidney beans. But ah. but they I've had black bean chili. They are starting to make chili with other beans. But I, I read. Yeah, I saw one woman on it. I prefer the red. One of the food ones. I, 
white kidney beans. For chili? Sure. Oh, that's something. The candel the cannellini white kidneys are like uh, are good if you have some smoked ham. You have some smoked pork. You know, smoked pork uh, hocks or neck bones. Or I had that last week. Ham, and you make a soup out of it, a bean soup with that, or the with lima uh, bean. Yeah, or the pasta bazoo. The Italian uh, stew. They use the white beans, right? But I would I wouldn't use regular pasta. I would use the whole wheat pasta but um, but anyway getting back to uh, the e the evil f voice that has a message for America's poor and homeless gee that sounds like we are here to kill you. <laughs> that's what that sounds like. <laughs> Very sinister indeed. We are here to kill you. We are here to kill you. See if I could do a, a pagan Christmas song. Oh, you know which one I hate. I hate them all, but you know which you know which one's annoying. Mm -hmm. The one that pounds at your brain and it's like da 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 Oh, you know, there's a new Christmas carol out. Uh, you know who plays Ebenezer Scrooge? Jim Carrey. Mm -hmm. It's on TV. They made him funny looking, man. He had like a big hawk nose, and they made Scrooge look really bad. I guess, I guess they want Scrooge to be more dislikable, more hated, so psychologically to get people to go out and spend more money that's what a Christmas Carol is about Charles Dickens wrote it right it's to get you to part with your money no it's not it's about how the rich disdain the poor in those days and they still do they still do they uh, uh, it's best that the, the poor die off to uh, decrease the uh, the surplus population from from the uh, Christmas Carol, that was um, that that was either Jacob Marley saying that when he was alive, Scrooge's partner, Jacob Marley, or that was Scrooge himself that said that. But that was more or less what it was. It had to do with um, giving. Somebody asked Scrooge to give. To charity to help the poor, and he says uh, it, it's best to decrease the surplus population. He says what your aunt used to say. They look at the pelicans. The pelicans landing at the marina on Long Key, Florida, in the Florida Keys, on the Gulf of Mexico side where they lived. The pelicans were coming once a day, well, more than once a day, and they were coming coming by us and and slowly landing and she says you see those pelicans up there coming here they're looking for handouts she was throwing a dig because they're they're both conservative Republican they're looking for handouts the birds which means that the poor are are a nuisance right. to Republicans 
All right. They're pesky. But interesting how they they feel how they look at the board. However, yeah, they will do do nothing. Yeah. To improve it's, 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 the plight of the poor. Or to make the poor rich. They do not have a solution, Dr. Bill. They only have snide remarks and criticisms and put downs and name calling, but they don't have a solution to help the plight of the poor because that is not their motivation. Or the shrinking middle class. Their motivation is to be part of the elite. Now... To help the elite at all terms. Right. Now, did they ever think that by... Since the, the middle class is slowly becoming low income and then poor, did they ever think that that their, um, their little system of putting the burden of taxation on the middle class cannot last for, for excuse me God bless you. cannot last forever because if the middle class are becoming more poor the if, economy suffers not only that they how, could, not think in how could the middle class continue carrying the tax burden if the middle class is shrinking and becoming poor they do not think in those terms you see they only don't think about the economy only they think self interest short term self interest but no, never long term, right? Right. You see how how smart progressives are? They think th things out. They think things out thoroughly, and and uh, come to these conclusions. You know, you got you have the Ray, Ronald Reagan put the tax burden on 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 the poor and took it off the rich. But now the the middle, I'm sorry, put it on the middle class and the poor. He took it off the rich, Reagan did, and he put it on the middle class and the poor. Now the middle class is shrinking and becoming poor and losing their homes and getting laid off and then whatever, you know. But you know you know, you know what some of these uh, Republican ass kisses are telling me? Oh, there's plenty of people out there in America to have money and, and buying power and... Uh, and oh, yeah, about 30% are doing okay. T top 30? Yeah. Doing fine. <clears throat> anyway, before you and start, the top one percent are doing way fine. They're doing hunky dory. Hunky dory. Peaches and cream. I'm gonna do a real quick promo. This is the brand new newsletter that just came out. It is uh, volume number. 122. 122. Wow, 122 newsletter census already. How about that? 35 years. 35 years. 1977, it was founded by the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. And this one is titled, uh, There Are No Christians on Wall Street by William J. Eisenman, Ph.D. And then, of course, The God Project is the Christmas Lie which is an oldie, an old classic, but, but still applies. It'll always apply. At this and, time of the year. And then, the very first installment of, uh, since uh, sexuality, a holistic approach is all finished, that project is finished, we have the first installment of How to Defeat a Conservative by William J. Eisenman. Well, PhD. It's supposed to be PhD. There you go. Alright? Alright. And that's that. Brand new newsletter. So go to newslettercensor.com, click on the printable order form, and with your gift to support this work, get your free annual subscription to Newsletter Censor. Um, we are living in the end times, and you need Newsletter Censor. You need it, believe me. So that this is the best way to, to join our organization, by the way, and to be a part of our organization. Or to educate yourself. Is, is to get your annual subscription to Newsletter Censors. So if you want to know how to join us, get your subscription to Newsletter Censors.
with your gift to support this work. Okay, now we continue. Yeah. Happy Festivus, Merry Pagan Christmas 2012. This is a special show because it is the dawning of the age of Aquarius. A lot of Democrats, many with close ties to the president, are saying the same thing. Congressional Progressive Caucus co-chair Keith Ellison, Minnesota Democrat, who was one of Obama's earliest and most enthusiastic backers in 2008, did the math. The current average earned benefits for a 65-year-old on Social Security is $17,134. What planet is this guy living on? Oh man. It's lower than that. Using chain CPI will result in a $6,000 loss for retirees in the first 15 years of retirement. Maybe they're looking to, to kill off retirees? and adds up to a $16,000 loss over 25 years. So let's see, 1995, 15, 16, 17 years, we've been recalculating the CPI. I wonder what that adds up to, that we've been robbed up of for those 17 years. This change would be devastating to beneficiaries, especially widowed women, more than a third of whom rely on the program for 90% of their income and use every single dollar of the Social Security checks they earn. What did your aunt say about Social Security? It, this is uh, my same conservative aunt who said the Pelicans are looking for handouts. She said that Social Security was only meant to be a supplement to a person's retirement and not the sole source of their income. Well, uh, maybe to the fortunate few in America who have a nice juicy nest egg waiting for them when they retire. And don't really need and, Social Security. And don't need it, and for those that really don't need it, they should uh, give it back, maybe. They should, it should be, they should not receive it. It should be given to poor people for, for, for your average retiree who really needs it. This would require the most vulnerable Americans to dig further into their savings to fill the hole left by unnecessary and irresponsible cuts to Social Security. Yeah. Bottom line, we're committed to standing against any benefit cuts to programs Americans rely on and tying Social Security benefits to chain CPI is a benefit cut. For Obama, these voices are significant. He is losing the allies who should be in the forefront of the fight to seal any deal he reaches with House Speaker John Boehner. Without a solid base of Democratic votes in the House and Senate, this deal won't get done. And make no mistake, a fiscal cliff compromise that compromises Social Security should not be done, period. I think the so-called fiscal cliff is, uh, was uh, invented to utilize the emotion of fear Correct. to get Obama and the Democrats to compromise and meet the Republicans either in the middle or maybe a little, well, a little more. to the right of the as, fence. As the turtle said the last time they did this, the debt ceiling. Mitch McConnell. We got, we got 98 percent of all we wanted. Well, he was, he was gleeful. Correct. What? Correct. Oh, correct. Who's that? Somebody sound, get married? Sound like a friggin' parrot. Oh, yeah, it sounds, it sounds like uh, tin cans behind a, a, a car, or a couple that just got married. No, it's just windy as hell out there. That's the message coming from former U.S. Senator Russ Feingold, 
whose group Progressives United has partnered with MoveOn.org and leading the progressive groups to develop a whip count that names the names of Senate Democrats who are weak need, who are part way there or wavering, who are champions committed to opposing any deal that cuts Medicare, Medicaid, and Social Security benefits. The president has placed himself in the weak need camp. Congressional Democrats should not stumble with him. We had an election, and the voters sent a message to Congress to focus on jobs and fairness, not cutting benefits for people who have worked all their lives and are now making ends meet on fixed income. Yeah, I mean, these people have no choice but to rely on Social Security as their primary uh -huh. source <clears throat> of income. And um, their very survival depends on it. And uh, <clears throat> to lower it with the super high cost of living that we have now today in the 21st century is, um, is really tragic. It's a. Uh, despicable and uh, you know uh, I mean how wealthy do wealthy people want to be to be happy pretty I mean, wealthy I, I think I think it's all a plot to uh, to cast the masses into slavery out of desperation <clears throat> of course out of desperation how do you get people to work desperate all right I think the uh, new uh, censored uh, article explains pretty much, yeah, you know about uh, stuff like that. That's how um, that's how Walmart suckers people uh, into uh, working at low wages. Well, if people if people were able to earn at low what they deserve, they wouldn't be working at Walmart. Yeah, working at Walmart for low wages and and plus working on holidays, because Walmart says so. And not having benefits, probably. Oh, this is a big thing now. The conservatives are ranting about. Why? They want you to be able to have the right to work on the holidays if you want to. If you want to. Not mandatory. Ah, we didn't go there yet, but you know that's where we're going to be going. When, you, when the boss says, listen, you come in on Christmas, listen. what are you going to say to him? F you. It's it's my religious well it's actually pagan Christmas but I would say you know cross with my fingers crossed behind my back it's it's my religious holiday you have to respect it and what if he says take him to court take a hike what about uh, uh, civil rights organizations they're decimating all that stuff L labor laws labor law they're decimating all that stuff. They're busting unions. They're busting all that no, stuff. How come the unions are not getting tough like the old days and busting them? Because people, the low information voter, yeah. that should be loving unions, are against them. You see what they did in Wisconsin. Through brainwashing? When they re-voted in the idiot governor. How the hell, after all the trouble he caused, you're talking about Walker? Walker. How the hell did he win that re-election? There you go. Or, because. Or did he win it fair and square? The re it, it doesn't matter. He won it. The Republicans had 57 million people vote for Mr. Romney. Right. While 60-some million voted for Obama. Who? You look back at the, 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 the days of FDR. And the Republicans had supporters then, too. Nobody should have ever voted FDR. And do you remember any of the names of those who ran against FDR? Nope. No. You only remember a winner. Well, the people who voted for the Mitster, Mitt Romney, did not vote for a person who had any facts or intellect behind them. They uh, voted based on ideology. We're talking about all the uh, religious nuts and cultists 
out there in, in the red states, in the Bible Belt states, all the kooks. Cookies. Cookie. Cookie. And that, uh, now, speaking of uh, the obsession with the Democrat to compromise and uh, get the Republicans to like him, uh, you think that's why uh, Obama had this um, secret meeting with Mitt Romney because he wanted to utilize Mitt Romney somehow in his uh, administration or pick his brains? That's part of the compromising bullshit. Who knows? And uh, well, he, well, as oh, I'm concerned, Mr. Mitt, Mitt Romney had no brains, so no, I don't know. If there was neither did Ryan. Neither, neither did Ryan with those those stupid Muppet faces that he made all the time, <laughs> and drinking his water a thousand times because yeah. he was so nervous. Now, now uh, Obama appointed uh, Mr. Kerry for uh, Secretary of State. Yeah, John Kerry, right? Yeah. So, hey, oh, gee, speaking of uh, <coughs> bipartisanship, uh, a lot of Republicans like him. They respect John Kerry. They didn't respect him enough in 2004 when he was running for president. They did everything they could to undermine him. He lost to Bushy Boy, right? Correct. GW. Correct. Man with a war, a war hero, was turned into a fake, a phony, a fraud. By the propaganda from the right. That's true. Vietnam War hero. And the low information voters. They ate it up. And they voted. Swift boat! And they voted for the man who says the Constitution is nothing but a damn piece of paper. And that the uh, Treasury bills uh, that underwrite the uh, Social Security system. I just paper in a in a in a file cabinet. Well, you, for that matter, a the best investment in the whole wide mm. world: Treasury bonds, United States Treasury bonds. And he thought of them as just pieces of paper in a file drawer. I mean, what's next? Saying that the Bible is just a, a bunch of paper glued together, bound together into a book? I mean, you, you can go on and on and on. <clears throat> about that. Um, for those of you jabronis that are wondering what this is, this is a weapons grade Blackthorn shillelagh imported <laughs> from Ireland. Uh, the, the kind that the British outlawed, the English banned. Uh, and that's why the Irish went to the walking stick shillelagh. But anyway, um, if you would like to get a James P. Madonna style shillelagh of your own, I haven't done this in a, a million months. Go to XavierGifts.com, that's X-A-V-I-E-R, Gifts.com, and just uh, send an email to um, Kathy and say that James P. Madonna of Mega Life 21 sent you, and you can get one. So we will have an army of progressive viewers and fans waving around a weapons-grade shillelagh. All right. Here's an unlikely bird story for the holiday season. You mean like a cooking of a bird or just a, 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 a wild boy, a bird? It involves some extremely loud, castaway, tropical birds that have been making their year-round home in Edgewater, oh, New Jersey. Here we go. Yes, the fucking, we have to keep up with these the parakeets. The fucking parrots of uh, the stray parrots of Edgewater, New Jersey. That Bill, that Reverend Bill, keeps on talking about every damn week. These friggin' birds. These parakeets must be respected. Maury, they must be respected. Well, considering that the bird is the word, continue. Read for several decades. At first. Their latest saga appeared to be turning into a feel-good story. Bird, bird, bird. The bird is the word. But as of this bird, writing, bird, bird, the situation bird. appears to be well up in the air. Little pun. The birds in question are monk parakeets. Do they have hoods? Do they have brown robes with hoods? Also called Quaker parrots. Are they like oatmeal? According to popular belief, they are the descendants of a bunch of parrots that escaped from John F. Kennedy Airport in the late 1960s. Ah. After the container that transported them 
from South America was broken. So they were they were not captive bred parrots back then. They were acquired. They were kidnapped in the wild, which is wrong to take wild animals from their freedom, put them into a prison to become pets for selfish, despicable human beings. Continue. Well, although these beautiful birds have developed a low, low loyal following over the years and established other colonies in Ridgefield, New Jersey and Leonian, they can create big headaches. So they're not only surviving the winter, but they are breeding, they're laying eggs, and they're multiplying. Wow. They have a terrible tendency to build their huge stick nests atop utility poles. Somebody should Creating tell Creating all sorts of costly problems. Somebody should tell them to not to do that. <laughs> the encouraging news is that the... <laughs> Just as the birds have adapted to New North Jersey. Bird, bird, bird. The bird is the word. Bubba perhaps, bird, bird. just perhaps, we may be learning how to adapt to them. Got no choice now. They're feral, right? The latest monk parakeet headlines and headaches arrived earlier this month. Yeah, headaches. First, a work crew hired by Edwarder. Uh-huh had to remove several trees where the birds nest so they could repair a retaining wall. As Scott Fallon reported in the record, that ruffled the feathers. That ruffled the feathers. Of some bird-loving residents. Members of the Edgewater Parrot Society. Edgewater alone has a parrot society. Correct. And there, there are these are the animal rights, animal lovers who had uh, for the monk parrot who have taken a liking to the stray monk parrots that really belong in, in the tropics that have miraculously survived the winters of the Northeast. Who uh, me. managed to stop the project so they could place nesting platforms? Bird, bird, bird. In a park nearby. Bird is the word. Days later, another colony was in the news. PSE and G was blaming them for a four hour power outage for some 3,400 customers, mostly in Leone. Did they have fried monk parrot when that happened? Englewood, Cliffs, and Peanut. After a nest, on a utility pole blew out a transformer. Wow. On Fort Lee Road near the entrance to Overpeck County Park. Overpeck is a great name for birds to, to live. Overpeck. It is probably too soon to see whether the Edgewater parakeets will build their nests on the new platforms, but that strategy worked a couple of years ago in Ridgefield, when bridge repairs displaced the colony there. Ideally, the nesting platform <sighs> could work in Leonia as well. We don't believe nesting platforms would necessarily prevent the type of outages that we saw in Leonia, said PSDG's Christine Snodgrass. Well, somebody that works for the New Jersey uh, uh, Power Company should have a last name as Snodgrass. It appears one reason the parakeets tend to build around our facilities is because equipment such as transformers, capacitor tanks, conductors generate heat due to electrical loads. Maybe. But Leonia or Bergen County government might give the platforms a try on public land near the utilities right of way. The building of nesting boxes to help a species is nothing new. 
as thousands of trees were lost to suburban development in the past couple of decades, folks started building nest boxes for displaced birds to nest in. The two best examples are tree swallows and wood ducks. I, I have a suggestion. Why don't they build nesting boxes uh, and, and install them in trees at Overpeck Park? What better place to have a bird sanctuary for these animals than at a lovely park? However, what if they want to build where it's warm? That's why they're building there. Maybe that's why, that's one of the reasons why these tropical monk parrots are surviving. Could because be. they're building their nests on top of the transformers. Let's hope monk parakeets can adapt as well. They don't have freaking parkas, that's for sure. They don't have little bird... Uh, uh, fleece. Uh, fleece, yeah, coats with hoods. Hoodies. And, 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 Hoodies. and they're not wearing scarves, yeah. No, they're, they're surviving somehow. These exotic tropical birds with their bright green feathers are stunning, albeit noisy. And watching them fly around in North Jersey, snow is one of the most incongruous sights of winter. So in the spirit of the season, peace on earth, goodwill toward birds, especially if they learn not to nest on the utility poles. Is there such a thing as a, um, a humane trap that will, that will capture these parrots and, they, and then they can be transported back to the tropics? Is there, why don't they do that? I have no idea. They should, first of all, these animals should not be smuggled. See, now the laws are tough. I think the smuggling, I, I think it's unlawful to take uh, wild indigenous creatures from these exotic tropical areas and, and sell them in the pet trade. I think most exotic pets are captive bred nowadays. Or... Bred is in breeding, not, not that they make them into a loaf of bread. A little bit of change can get you what you want. A little bit of change can get you what you a want. A little bit of moolah, baby! can get you whatever you want. Well, they're already they're already going through the trouble of building nest boxes. Why not put that intelligence... I'm talking about buying exotic animals. Oh, in other a words... A little bit of moolah, in other put in words, the right place. So what you're talking we'll you about what is what you, you have a feeling there will, there will always be a black market for things that are not ethical or not right. If somebody had the dough, they can acquire what they want. Just like many years ago, a friend of mine acquired an illegal baby Nile crocodile yeah. as a pet. And of course, as it grew, he had to get rid of it. Lickety split. Where did he get rid of it? I don't know. Uh -huh. But you know how big Nile crocs get? Pretty big, I assume. They, they killed one that was like 20 to 2,500 pounds. It was eat, it was a man eater. Uh, like the song from the 80s. She only comes out at night. She's a man eater. All and oats. Quaker oats. All and oats. All and oats. Yeah. She's a man eater. All right. You got something heavy? A few words to ponder. As we, as we sail toward the fiscal cliff. Here we go, that, that fiscal cliff. Those words would be, that was then, this is now. Why, do, why does the Obama administration keep on falling for and making nice nice with these Republicans? Well, I would just tell the people what's going on, that this fiscal cliff is a bunch of bullshit. Rip away the false piety, legalistic hair splitting offered by Republican lawmakers, rationalizing their decision to abandon a pledge that they will never, ever, ever, 
ever vote to raise taxes, and that's pretty much what the explanation boils down to. Screw them and screw the rich. The middle Is it fair the middle class should pay all the taxes? Obviously. There are more of us. Damn right. That's what Mr. Reagan figured back then. And there are more of us to fight something that's not right. Also, Billy, Bone, Billy Bones. Really? When's the last time you saw a boycott work? When's the last time you saw Occupy Wall Street work? Because people do not work as a unit. They do not look to the ant like the Bible says. And the Obama administration, along with the G.W. Bush administration, squashed all dissent. Hey, squash, squash. What you going like in the words of Hulk Hogan? Oh, yeah. What you going to do when uh, perhaps you got hundreds of thousands of angry people out there to get you? We don't have that in America. No, because they're pussies. Okay. Representative Peter King says he understood the pledge propounded by the almighty Grover Norquist. He's almighty because people allow him to be almighty. And his group. Americans for tax reform to okay. obligate him for only one term. Wait a minute. His group is called Americans for Tax Reform. They're already getting a tax holiday as it is. The rich. They meet every Wednesday. Tax to reform. To find out better ways to defund the American government. But they don't pay. Make it small enough to drown in the bathtub. They don't pay any taxes. They want. What more do they want? Tax reform. They want to pay none. And there's idiots out there, mm -hmm. people that are insisting that the rich are paying the uh, the, bur the tax burden in America. What did Leonia Helmsley say? Big, rich people, tax pe taxes are for are not for rich people. They're for the little guy, for right. more or less. And that's what they figure. And that's what they want. Because they have it set there's up. There's more of us. Because they have it set up that way. Yeah, there's. you keep on saying there's more of us. True. There's more of us. But when something is, is not fair or not ethical, there's more of us to get out there and scream and fight it. It ain't gonna happen. Because every time people vote, they always seem to vote to party. And when they vote to party, the corporations and the fat cats always seem to win. Well, and they vote one party, and they tell the party to raise the taxes on the rich and do not touch Social Security, Medicare, <coughs> and Medicaid, and then that party, once he's reelected, starts talking about a chain to CPI. After they get elected? Or, yeah. or re-elected? Yeah. Which means the word sellout comes to my mind. <laughs> Yeah. Sell out as in ill-gotten gains or greasing somebody's palm. You know, or the reasons the, are many. Or the backward palm, you know, the, the Yeah, the, the reasons are many, but they are there. Or also known as uh political corruption. Apparently represent, <coughs> representative Peter King thought the pledge had to be renewed uh, like a li driver's license. Senator Lindsey Graham says that if Democrats agree to entitlement reform, I will violate the pledge for the good of the country. A stirring statement of patriotism and sacrifice. Oh, really? That warms your heart <laughs> like a midnight snack of jalapeno chili fries. Jalapeno poppers with the che cheddar cheese inside. Hey, that's tasty. In other words, bull Twinkies. <laughs> bull Twinkies. If you want the truth and why a trickle of GOP lawmakers is suddenly willing to blaspheme the holy scripture of their faith, it's simple. The pledge used to be politically expedient. Now it is not. Uh-huh. This is not, by, by the way, a column in defense of Norquist's pledge. The only thing dumber than his offering such a pledge was scores of politicians signing it. 
What the hell is Norquist bitching about? Holy crap, I mean... An opinion that has nothing to do with the wisdom or lack thereof of raising taxes. And everything to do with the fact that one ought not, as a matter of simple common sense, make hard, inflexible promises on changeable matters of national import. It's all well and good to stand on whatever one's principles are, but as a politician, a job that by definition requires the ability to compromise, you don't needlessly box yourself in. Never say never. Much less ever, ever, ever. So, <sighs> this revolution against he who must be obeyed, however modest, is nonetheless welcome. It suggests reason seeping like sunlight into places too long cloistered in the damp and dark of ideological rigidity. But it leaves an observer in the oddly weightless position of applauding a thing and being simultaneously disgusted by it. Has politics ever seemed more ignoble than in these clumsy, self-serving attempts to justify a deviation from orthodoxy? <laughs> they have to do this, of course, because the truth. I signed the pledge because I knew it would help me get re-elected. But with economic ruin looming and Obama re-elected on a promise to raise taxes on the rich, and most voters supporting him on that, it's not doing me as much good as it once did. Well, hey, Ob Obamacare went on the back burner and came right off the table. The, I mean, socialized med didn't didn't he run uh, talking about socialized medicine? Public uh, na option. Na national health care plan when, when he first ran for president? Public option. Public option. There you go. He ran. He talked about public option when he first ran. In this awkward about face, it's a long article. These lawmakers leave us wondering once again whether the vast majority of them, right or left, mm. red or blue, Republican and Democrat, really believe in anything beyond being reelected. No, they think about money in their pocket. There is a reason Congress's approval ratings flirted with the single digits this year. There's a reason. A new Gallup poll finds only 10% of Americans ranking Congress high or very high in honesty and ethics. Oh, two words that uh, they, they know nothing about. <laughs> Raw lawmakers rank higher. Advertisers rank higher. Excuse me, lawyers, not lawmakers. Liars for hire. Even journalists rank higher. This is the sad past to which years of congressional grandstanding, fact-spinning, cookie-jar pilfering, and assortment harumphing and pontificating have brought us. And while a certain cynicism toward its leaders functions as a healthy antigen in the body politic, it cannot be good for either the nation or its leaders so many of them are held in plain contempt. Yeah. The moral malleability exemplified by the likes of King and Graham will not help. Perhaps we should ask them to sign a new pledge. I will always tell you what I think and what I plan to do in plain English, regardless of whether you like it or it benefits me politically. But no lawmaker would make that pledge. And who would believe them if they did? I'm going to simplify that, that reading, that, that elongated reading by stating uh, corruption, uh, uh, greed, getting paid off, uh, you know, uh, owing somebody a favor who did a huge favor for you. These um, rich, elitist, right-wing 
Republican politicians. Their loyalty is here. The wallet, right? Their wallet. Okay. You figure, uh, Dr. Bill, if somebody is living high on a hog and they're pretty well off and their retirement is all set, you know, they're all set, they're going to be, they're going to live, a, they're going to be retired as a rich person, they're living now as a rich person, their families are living, uh, their kids are living as wealthy, spoiled little brats getting everything they want, they themselves are rich. If they're living so high on a hog, hog, you would figure they would have a tiny bit of a conscience and say, eh, so what if I pay my fair share in taxes? I'm still going to live high on a hog. Put money back into the pockets of the true consumer, which is the little guy, the middle class, and low-income people. Greed you know. is a disease. The, 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 it feeds this is the on itself. This is the true consumer, the little guy. Put money back into the pocket, into the wallet of the little guy to stimulate the economy and stop out, you know, the outsourcing of jobs to, to China. I mean, all, that's all they got to do, and they still will be rich and live high on the hog. It's that simple. What is the big deal? Of course, they're, if they are so selfish to the point where this greed it becomes a, like a mental illness and an obsession where you know have being a billionaire is not enough they want to be a multi-billionaire and then and then after and billionaire make world government own the world own the water supply own the food supply own all the resources you're talking about a world a, a feudalistic oligarch like in the old days we've already had it the kings the serfs may i take you back to the days of the king when you could not hunt in the king's forest and, Correct. and, and the king and, owned everything and hunt of the king's deer all right do we have one more not so long uh, article more than two dozen sea turtles I, I like sea turtles they're, they're they're endangered stressed by cold ocean waters I thought the water, waters were getting warmer though Cold? have been airlifted from New England to recover in balmy Florida. What the hell are they doing swimming up to New England? What happened to the Gulf Stream? Did they follow the Gulf Stream? The Coast Guard flew the Excuse turtles me. to Orlando on Friday. The Daytona Beach News Journal reported that 20 turtles were taken to SeaWorld Orlando. Five loggerhead turtles were taken to the Volusia County Marine Science Center. Three other facilities in Florida also took in turtles. SeaWorld officials say an unseasonably warm November delayed the turtle's exit from Cape Cod Bay when water temperatures suddenly dropped. The turtles developed hypothermia and washed ashore. So therefore, the waters were warm, and then got cold, and the turtles developed hypothermia and washed ashore. Well, normally, I know... They were uh, at Cape Cod Bay, but when the water was warm. So, why did the... Uh, why did the turtles remain because that of the far awfully north? warm November. And what you're trying to say is that the temperature they stayed too long. The, the, they stayed too long up north, and of course, sea creatures follow the food source, and they stood up there a tad bit too long. And then what you're saying is the temperature suddenly dropped. Not suddenly; it just you know began getting colder. 
and so they did not start going south. They ended up with hypothermia and washed the shore. But didn't they feel the water getting colder? And, and I guess it got colder faster, like the the frog in the in the water boiling. You 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 boil the water slowly, slowly before he knows that he's starting to boil. Well, usually he becomes unconscious. Incremental. He becomes unconscious from the uh, the higher temperature. Probably passes out and then boils. That's, that's whatever, but he's still there in the boiling so water it, and doesn't know it until it's yeah. too late. That's the point. Another another uh, negative, catastrophic uh, sign of global warming, at least for the turtles, for the sea turtles, rising oceans, uh, coastal cities being flooded out, more storms, worse severity, more frequent storms, hurricanes coming north, 